Good afternoon. My name is Mick Adkins. I'm the director of product for Primordial Labs, Inc. We are a defense technology company, and we're focused on solving the big robot problem. That's what we like to call it. So what is the big robot problem? You're probably familiar with the big data problem, the idea that there's so much data, how do we make sense of it, and how do we use it to accomplish our missions? So the big robot problem is there's so many robots, there's so many unmanned systems, how do we make sense of what they're doing and effectively use them to accomplish our mission? So the story of the last five years and probably of the next 50 in warfare is the story of more autonomy, more unmanned systems, more sophisticated platforms with more sensors, and all of those are being pushed down to the lowest levels, and we're asking military service members to effectively use them in very complex, dynamic, difficult environments. And with all of those new capabilities, there are some inherent challenges that come as well. And the principal challenge that we see is how do I get the benefit of all of these autonomous platforms without overloading the humans that are trying to use these platforms, integrating with their operations in a way that is not overloading and in a way that they're able to achieve success. So to solve this problem, we have developed a Neura, our voice controlled autonomy software. So what does it do? Very simply, a Neura allows you to talk to a drone or talk to another robotic system and have it carry out the mission you give it and that's it. In a very natural way, in a very intuitive way, in a way that doesn't take a lot of training for every new proprietary system. So that's what a Neura does. How does it work? So a Neura works by using natural language processing, taking the intent out of that operator's statement, and then translating it to a mission that a robotic system can understand and carry out. What's the so what behind that? So the so what is, there's nothing more natural to humans than talking and giving our objective. It's the same way in the military, I would communicate to another platoon or another squad. I would key out on a radio and I would send a task or send a request. So there's nothing more intuitive than voice. And there's also nothing quite as expressive and powerful as voice in terms of an interface. So if I want to achieve a search mission with manual control of a, with a joystick or a series of pretty complicated and specific to the platform button key presses, that takes a lot of burden. It takes my attention and it kind of pulls me into that specific platform instead of allowing me to give a simple input like recon this route or search this objective and having that very simple input trigger a lot of action to achieve what I was looking to achieve. So that's kind of the so what. Now for the fun part, we'll actually show you some flying and um, I'll give you a quick orientation. So what you're seeing here, this is a uh, ATAC, which is a common operating picture commonly used in SOCOM. This is our plugin. You're seeing kind of a, a map of the objective area. Jordan's got some points laid out as you would for a mission. You're seeing the drone feed and this is all a mirror of what he sees on the phone on his chest. And what he's gonna demonstrate is a Neura allowing him to key out on his microphone, the same headset you have with deployed forces. He's gonna key out, task the drone via voice and achieve the mission that would take however many number of button presses if you were doing it the legacy way. All of a Neura, all of the compute is happening at the edge on his body, on this body worn computer. So there is no LLM being used. There is no callback to the internet. There's no reach back needed. It's all happening local to him, which allows him to get the benefit, get the value of this more powerful interface without having to have reach back connection. So with that as an orientation, I'll hand it over to Jordan and they'll show you what Anera can do. Thanks, Vic. My name is Jordan, senior product manager here at Primordial Labs. Uh, before this, 10 and a half years in the Marine Corps, a little over half of that with MARSOC. It, with Mars I was element leader, master breacher, CQB leader, Hearst master, assault climber, 
order leader if I said that already. And I also flew all the SUAS systems. Uh, it's hard enough to keep current with your day job, let alone know five different systems and five different inter interfaces. So one thing I love about Anura is just one interface, one thing, method of communication for everything. Uh, the first couple of things I'll show you are, are more complex compound commands truncated to this net. Um, but it's to demonstrate that if you had sticks and you're sucked in your controller, uh, it might take you quite a bit longer than just talking to it and tasking it to do so. Go up five feet, then move right 10 feet, then look at alpha and zoom in. So I put this overlay onto the conference center. It's not geo rectified, not exact, but it will look at the uh, alpha at that point. It'll be on the Palantir 10. That's just one example there. Uh, you know, you can do this for any number of things, you know, something very far away. Maybe, you know, you're, you're moving several miles, you're on a bigger aircraft, doesn't matter. Come down three feet, then move north five feet and turn right, then zoom out. And you do any number of very simple commands, you know, cardinal directions, movements, elevation changes, go up three feet. Uh, you can control the sensor, you know, the pitch of the camera. You want to look left, right, particular degrees. You can do that as well. Set the camera to 30 degrees, then look left 20 degrees, then zoom in. And then um, there's also points you can see here on ATAC. So I plotted a bunch. I can do them live. Um, you can also make routes and things like that with the route planner tool in ATAC. Um, but something that's very important is referential commands, basically a direct form distance from a known point. So if it's from me, I need you to fly 500 meters to my northwest. Um, or for the example of this demo, look 50 feet south of Alpha. At any known point, uh, like I said, myself or, you know, anything that you plot on the map. And with ATAC, you can plot a point wherever the sensor is looking, where it currently is. You can do it manually as well. Um, and we also support a variety of mission type orders, things such as searches, routes, uh, orbits, uh, offensive, defensive scans, raster scans, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm not going to place the route with the route planning tool now it goes under this overlay, but I have these points, Echo and Delta. You can do the same thing with just the points that free exist. Fly route, Echo, o Delta. That's will just ping pong back and forth inside this net. Uh, we also, you can make a restricted operating zone, our geofence essentially, um, or a no-fly zone, just the same. And you can also remove these points verbally if you wish. Stop. Remove echo, then remove delta. Go to hotel. And I'll just show you, show you a little truncated search here. Try to get it in the center so I don't accidentally fly it into the net. Move back. Five feet. Go left three feet. Seems good. Search your current position with a radius of six feet. So you, you can give it a radius. You don't have to. It'll standardize to like 150 feet. Um, but it'll just kind of ping in that magic circle, that six foot radius bubble. You do the same thing with the orbits, the scans. Oh, there I am. But that concludes my portion of the demo. Thank you, everyone. I'll, I'll uh, pass it back to Mick. Thanks, Jordan. So as you can imagine, if, if I'm employing this drone, I'm in a very dynamic environment. I'm very close to my objective. I'm very close to bad guys. 
it's not really a time where I want to be sucked into technology, remembering exactly how to use a controller or a joystick and glued to my screen. It's a time when I want to be thinking about solving the problem and it's very easy for me to just key out and task that drone in a way that's very natural and intuitive to me as a military professional. So everything you saw today, of course, were confined to this small netted area. But if you think about using this in an overall objective area where I have many different checkpoints and routes and phase lines, potentially I'm controlling multiple drones, multiple different types of drones that all out of the box have their own specific proprietary ground control station, training, et cetera. And think about the power now of controlling all of those drones via one way, via talking to them in a way that's completely natural to human beings on how we communicate. The same cognitive burden that a, a guy on the ground feels close to the objective area, it applies in the cockpit of a fighter jet, it applies for a helicopter pilot trying to control multiple launched effects. It really applies throughout the military. So the, you know, the thesis behind our company is that there is a better way to democratize access to these advanced capabilities and make them accessible in the most intuitive and expressive way possible, which is by making the machines speak warfighter and not the other way around. We're Primordial Labs. Uh, we're excited to be demoing for you. We're over at booth 423 and we'll be hanging out here. Love to talk to you about our capability, about your mission area, and thanks for your time.